text amendment. It is a thoughtful, measured way to provide the shelter space needed to end homelessness. Thank you so much. Thank you. And next speaker. Please state your name and address. Sure. Good evening. My name is Phil Duran. I'm the legal director for an organization called Out Front Minnesota. Uh, we're the largest organization in the state that works for full equality for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender individuals and our families. We've been located in the Sabathian Community Center at East 38th Street and 3rd Avenue South for almost 30 years. The need for shelter, both short-term and ongoing, affects many people in the Minneapolis community and including many LGBT folks, particularly young people. Recently, the Wilder Foundation estimated that in Minnesota, some 12% of homeless individuals, uh, homeless youth, identify as LGBT. The Williams Institute, which is associated with UCLA, estimates that in some parts of the country that number could be as high as 40%. Many LGBT youth and adults are on the streets and in need of, sh of shelter services because they've been rejected by families or communities for reasons which ultimately derive from religious viewpoints. Where current Minneapolis policy requires that overnight shelter services be accessory to places of worship, you can perhaps imagine the tension that that creates for those in our community who need service but who are afraid to seek it at such facilities. We've worked with people who have been either mistreated or in fact turned away from such facilities. That fear is real. It's important though to recognize that in many, many instances that fear is unfounded. In recent years, there have been tremendous changes in the viewpoints of people of faith regarding LGBT folks and in the, uh, on behalf of LGBT folks regarding people of faith. We know that so many staff and volunteers part of these services are deeply committed to treating every person who shows up with dignity and respect, but we do know that the problem continues. We support this proposal tonight. We hope that you will as well because it ends that automatic link between overnight shelter services and congregations. It wouldn't, uh, to our knowledge, interfere with those services that are being provided, but it does create the possibility of creating new and different kinds of services that will help all people in our communities, certainly including those in the LGBT community. So we hope that you'll support this proposal. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to, to try to answer them. Thank you. If not, thank you. And next Afternoon, my name is Ryan Stepera. live on the 32nd uh, block of Lindell uh, South. I'm a social worker, I've been working with the homeless for about 10 years. Um, I'll piggyback on a lot of what everyone said that um, this just makes sense. It's practical, it's pragmatic, it's it's time. It's been it's been moved through before and it hasn't passed. And as everyone said, it's a homelessness is obviously a very complex issue and to have it um, uh, siloed into the situation we have now, concentrated in specific areas and, and limited in its scope and what we can do it just doesn't make sense in addressing it in the way we know we should. Um, and just to to avoid redundancy and everyone shared really great points, the the great thing about this whole process was I was part of that uh, forum and we had council members, community members, social workers and individuals experiencing homelessness in the same room. And again, for a process to have the most vulnerable, the poorest uh, citizens of Minneapolis be in that space and at the table and be heard and to see something actually move through and be passed um, is, is good for our city. It's the way we should operate. Um, and the, the, the thing that I took away from that day was that they didn't want more shelters. As we said, that doesn't address the issue, doesn't solve homelessness. They want more options to effectively and efficiently move forward in self-sufficiency. Uh, I think this amendment will get us there. So. You all look convinced, I think, this will pass. So thanks for your time. Thanks. Uh, next speaker. Thank you, I'm Cam Gordon. I'm a co-author. I happen to live at uh, 912 Franklin Terrace, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in Ward 2. Um, I just wanted to briefly uh, uh, highlight that I am also inter inter introduced and I'm working on a parallel ordinance that would involve the uh, city's health department in providing some oversight, which I think will be key. Um, so far, the things that we've really articulated that they to work on is um, maintaining the physical building in good condition, keeping it clean, especially free of pests, uh, also complying with fire regulations, providing laundry service and access to laundry facilities, and providing appropriate restroom and shower facilities. Um, beyond that, we aren't looking um, at, at many other changes. 
And I also just wanted to note that uh, the shelter system that we've had in the city um, since I've been on the council, and it's about 10 years, really hasn't been working. Uh, and it's been strange and it's been difficult to look at uh, what would be the possibility of changing it and opening it up. I believe what we have here is a carefully well thought out uh, reasonable solution where we're opening it. Um, I think we may discover we open it and it doesn't really result in more beds because we're being so careful, but at least we I think we can open it. And we're really creating some, I think, interesting possibilities with the smaller emergency shelters for some more um, customized shelters that we hear about dramatic need for. Isn't there a place, I'm a, I'm a young woman, I don't feel comfortable going to these big shelters, I have nowhere to go, couldn't there be another shelter? Or something more culturally specific? Um, or something that's more aligned for, for more youth. We have a lot of youth. And I think we actually have more people who are homeless that we don't know about because they're couch surfing, living in cars, and if they actually thought, oh, I can go somewhere, I have a shower, I can stay there for 30 days, I might even have some support services that could get me some treatment or something, like these emergency shelters could do, um, I think we'd be meeting a, a real um, need there. So I think that we're doing this in a way that will um, allow more shelters to get created and serve more people, but also probably preserve, and I think even enhance the quality of life in some neighborhoods. In my neighborhood, there's many homeless people, they end up living down by the river, um, and, and just and that's people don't really like having that around either. So this is an opportunity to provide some alternatives. Um, and I'm happy to stand for any questions if you have any and appreciate the time. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this item? There is no one. I'll close the public hearing. And uh, commissioners, are there any further questions of Commissioner Bender? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Shanna, could you? Um, in the peer city research, um, almost every other city allows shelters in high density residential areas. Could you talk more about that? Because our proposal does not. Um, so one question is, does this peer city research table reflect what we are calling overnight shelters? Um, and then could you talk more about why we decided not to include high density residential in our proposal? So staff found a variation of cities, pure cities, that um, define two different definitions. So they'll they'll parcel out the most uh, closest example to what our amendment is suggesting is the city of St. Paul that has the smaller facilities as the emergency shelters, larger facilities as overnight shelters, um, and essentially we we kind of treated it pretty similarly to St. Paul. There are other cities where they're all treated the same way um, and high density residential was a consideration. Um, we initially started to look at overnight shelters, the larger facilities being more akin to supportive housing and we do allow supportive housing in our high density residential districts. So it's not to say that that wouldn't be uh, a possibility, it just, this was such a large change from the existing regulations, which are so stringent. Um, we talked about uh, perhaps a, a more incremental approach, and, and that's what you see before you today. So it's not to say that uh, there's not flexibility for change. There isn't, uh, you know, the zoning code, as we all know, is a living document. We are more than happy to come back to the Planning Commission, City Council for report um, when deemed necessary to determine whether or not this was an effective amendment. Um, but it, as far as uh, talking about shelters and when we talked about it as staff, we talked about community meetings, we talked about it in the steering committee meetings, we said we want to see the opportunity for shelters citywide. This does that. Does it do it to a point that uh, is going to make sense for some of our larger operators? Maybe not. Okay, I think that's a helpful clarification. And just also wanted to note that we, we also did discuss C1 as well, and, and that has also not been included, I think, for the reasons that you outlined. So what we landed on was a what is a relatively restrictive um, expansion to C2, C4, downtown, and the industrial living overlay district. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any further questions of staff? Thank if there are much. none, would someone like to start us off with a motion? I would like to make a motion to approve the text amendment to allow emergency and overnight shelters as a principal use in certain districts and return chapter 
550 industrial districts for the record. Second. We, we have a motion and a second, and that was uh, a motion uh, for a staff recommendation, just to clarify. Um, Commissioner Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, you know, I just want to take this chance to say thank you to everyone who's participated in this. We spent a long time on this issue and it is really important and really sensitive and staff has really gone above and beyond. And Shanna, just thank you so much for everything you did and folks who stepped up. Um, Mr. Stopera was a little, uh, modest and, and he, he organized the meeting that we held, um, speaking with folks who are experiencing homelessness, which was so informative as we tried to understand how these uses um, you know, really serve, I mean, we think of these sometimes as a, as a land use issue and, and really bringing that to life and how it's impacting people's day-to-day -day lives as they, you know, work to get back into housing and, and, um, just to understand, um, those specific day-to-day -day needs. And I thought also the two public meetings that we held were very enlightening. We learned in one of the neighborhoods where folks were, um, working with a new shelter. They did a tour of the facility and folks left being more concerned about the people who were being served in the shelter than they were about the impacts on their neighborhood. And I think that just goes to show that, you know, as we involve people in these discussions, you know, we all know that homelessness is a, is a problem in our community. It's one that I think unfortunately is growing in a lot of populations. And this is us stepping up to um, provide the beds that we need for people who are in need. So I was really thankful for everyone who took the time. Um, I know it was a really important priority for many of my colleagues to um, not concentrate shelters. And we have gone, um, we have strived to create a policy recommendation that distributes shelters as much as we can and as much as practical. Um, and then again, we landed on what I think is, um, you know, a relatively modest expansion of, of what are really the most, um, I think, uh, cost-effective shelters to run, which is our largest shelters. Um, I think the folks who are operating shelters would have liked to see us go farther than we did in this proposal, but um, but again, because it is such a large change, um, you know, Councilmember Gordon and I uh, felt the most comfortable with this as a first step. So uh, uh, obviously very supportive of this change, and thanks again to everyone who's been involved. Yes, thank you. Um, um, I think this is a great strategy, and I, I think it's very important that we all understand that this is a citywide this isn't things focused in the neighborhood south of downtown or near north. This is a citywide effort. There's a homeless shelter, overnight shelter that could be way south down in the end of Nicollet Avenue, which is which is wonderful. You know, I live in Whittier. I, I live in Harriet, actually. We're neighbors. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's very important that we, we look at policies that are citywide because they do affect all sorts of people. There are no, you know, homelessness is not discriminant against anyone. Um, the one minor thing I would like to see would be a, a little bit more spacing you know, to a quarter mile on the emergency shelters. I think that 300 feet, while it seems minuscule, um, for a place like Whittier might make the difference a little bit. Um, but um, I'm very supportive of this uh, motion. Thank you. Thanks. Is there any further discussion? And I, I'll just add, I, especially when looking at the Pier City uh, research, I, I was really struck by how restrictive we currently are and, and maybe how outdated our uh, regulations currently are for meeting a very important need. So I just wanted to thank our two authors and, and everyone who put uh, time into this. So if there's no further discussion, clerk, please call the roll. Bender? Aye. Kronzer? Aye. Cabrino? Aye. Rockwell? Aye. Slack? Aye. Five zero. All right, and that motion carries. That concludes our discussion on that item and concludes our business for tonight. We have Committee of the Whole on Thursday. Mr. Winberg, you have another announcement? Commissioners, uh, given the timing, you may want to consider stopping by the Pillsbury um, relighting that starts at uh, 630. The Pillsbury sign up top of A mill is being relit starting in a festivities that uh, began at 630. All right. Uh, and that uh, concludes our meeting for today. We're adjourned.